I've never heard RBD constraints explained in a way that really made sense to me, so I figured we would take a look at how they work and also how we can manipulate them inside Houdini. So I just have a scene set up here. This is a bus that you can download from 3dscans.com. So where I grabbed it is free to grab, so you can grab that and follow along here. I also will put this project file available on Patreon. They will not be able to get to everything that's actually in this project file in this video, so there will be some extra stuff in there if you are interested, showing you just kind of how things work. But I've just taken this mesh and I have remeshed it, and then I'm just making it sit on the ground plane using this match size set to min. Then we can take this and do an RBD material fracture. I'm just going to cancel that right away. Let's set the scatter points up to like 20. And that'll give us a mesh that has just a few more breaks in it so we can actually kind of manipulate it and see what's going on here. So let's drop down an RBD exploded view just to see what that looks like. And you can see that this gives us a nice mesh that's broken up. So we'll drag that off to the side and then let's drop down our bullet solver. And we're going to wire in all three of our outputs here from our material fracture. The first one is the geometry, the second one is the constraints, and the third one is the proxy geometry. So let's take a look at what this gives us here. So if I press, don't press play yet, actually, we need to come into our bullet solver and come to the collisions and set the ground type to ground plane so that it doesn't just fall straight down and not do anything. So let's press play and you can see that it just sits on our ground plane now. And that's because we have these constraints set up. So you can see these lines that are going through our mesh. Those are the actual constraints. We can visualize those by dropping down a null and wiring in our second input. And you can see we have just a bunch of lines that are going between a bunch of the centroids of the pieces to other centroids and that's creating the actual constraints. And if I come to our geometry spreadsheet and take a look at our primitives, that's where all of our attributes are going to reside, will be on the constraint primitives. So if I come back to our material fracture here, come to constraints, you can see we have some different settings here. You can see search radius is going to be how the constraints are formed. It's going to make more or less depending on how big this search radius is. We have our glue constraint name which is called glue. And then we have this primary strength, which is set to 10,000 by default and the strength variance of 0.8. So if I set this strength down to zero and I come back to our bullet solver here, reset our SIM and actually look at it. If I press play, it's going to fall apart. That's because those constraints are breaking right away because the strength is set to zero. If I come to our null here, you can see that our strength is all set to zero. And you can also look at it post-solve. You can see that they've all disappeared and that's because as they break, they are discarded by the sim because they're no longer needed. And you can see that they're set to zero here and then they slowly break. And you can see that we have them disappearing in our viewport as well. Oh, let's say we wanted to control this. So maybe we want the head to not break off. We want the rest to break, but we want the head to stay together. We can do that really easily by dropping down a color. We'll wire in our constraint here. And let's actually give us some more space here as well. So we have this color. Let's set this to black and let's set it to the primitives because again, our constraints are on the primitives. We can take that make a copy of it and we'll set that equal to white and then we'll just select maybe the head here then we can dive into our bullet solver and we can come in and drop down a wrangle it's just going to be a little bit of code it's not going to be anything that's very complex you'll see kind of what we do here let's actually come back up to the material fracture as well and just reset that primary strength back to 10,000 so that it doesn't break apart but in the wrangle here, you can do a bunch of different things, but we need to actually make sure that it is able to work on the constraints first. The way that we do that is coming to the data bindings and setting the geometry to the constraint geometry, and that enables it to work on the constraints. 
So now I can set the strength, which is the name of the glue constraint, equal to zero. And I press play and you can see it's actually going to do nothing because I forgot to run over primitives. Because like I said before, all of our constraints are on the primitives. So if I press play now, you can see that it's going to fall apart. But as I said before, we wanted the head to stay together, but the rest to fall apart. That's the reason that we set up those colors. So we can do a simple if statement here. So if at cd.r, it's a black and white uh, color, so it's not all of the colors are going to be the same. All the color channels are going to be the same. So we'll set that equal to if cd.r is equal to zero or equal to black, we're going to set the strength equal to zero. So now if I press play, you can see that it's going to fall apart, but our head actually sticks together here. And as it continues to fall, you can see that it is, again, just sticking together. And if I take a look at our null here, you can see that all of our constraints are still there that are in the head. And you can see as I come back through here, they start to break with the ones that are black and that causes the mesh to fall apart. Pretty cool stuff there, but let's say we wanna animate this. Let's come to this and create a group. And we're gonna be going over primitives. We wanna disable that base group. Let's go to bounding regions. Let's enable bounding sphere, make that a little bit bigger and let's drag this up. And let's just keyframe the center here We'll bring this down. Sorry, let's undo that. Let's go back to frame 30. And let's bring this down to encase the head. And we'll set another keyframe there. And now we should have this animated. So let's just enable that in our group here. So group one, press play. You can see that we have this animating onto our actual constraints. But if I press play here, you can see that it's going to fall apart. Actually, what I need to do is invert these. So let's set this to white and I'll set this to black. Dive into here and if it is equal to yeah, equal to 0, then we want it to fall apart. Right, let me make sure. Yeah, so we'll have it animating to black. And I can press play and you can see that it is going to do absolutely nothing. That's because it doesn't really like animation outside of the solver here. So we have to do everything inside of the solver, which isn't too difficult to do actually. So we'll just go ahead and get rid of all of that. We'll come into the bullet solver and we can drop down a VOP here, so geometry VOP. And again, we need to come to the points or the run over and make it primitives. And we also need to set the data bindings to constraint geometry. And I'm going to wire this into our wrangle. And I'm going to jump into this. So if we want to animate this, we can do that super simply that that same animation by using the position. So we'll do a vector to float. We're going to take the position, we're going to take the y value of that position and compare it to a value. So we'll wire that into our CD and we're going to do greater than and it's not going to actually allow you to really view this very well on the simulation. So I'm just going to copy those two nodes. Let's come back up here and drop down a geometry or sorry, a primitive fop. And we'll wire in our constraints here. And let's just paste in those nodes. And we'll wire that into CD. If I will do just one. Oops. There we go. Into CD. And as I drag this up, you can see that we're starting to get something. So we can find a value that works. So we'll set this. So about 3.5 is going to make all the mesh completely black. And as I drag this down, 
2.3 is about where we're going to see the head starting to crumble. So if I come in here, go to frame one, come to 3.5, and actually it's not going to allow us to animate in here. We need to promote this parameter. So we'll come back up, promote that parameter, 3.5, set a keyframe there, go to frame 30, and go down to I said 2.3, and I can press play here. And let's see, we had the white falling apart. So if it's equal to zero, so we want it to be, if it's equal to one, set it equal to zero. So now if I press play here, you can see that it should be animating. If I take a look at our actual null here, you see that it is actually animating the strength value to zero, but nothing's actually happening. And that's because the constraints aren't having any movement to actually break them. So we can just completely get rid of them by doing a remove prim. And we want to use the first input, which is going to be our self, the self geometry. We'll do the remove the prim number, which is going to remove the current prim or the, the current uh, constraint that we have. We'll set that to one. And if I press play now, it's going to animate along here. We should start to see our head start to crumble. And we do. If I take a look back at our constraints, you can see that those constraints have all broken. As I go back here, you see they don't actually turn white, they just break. And it's because we're removing them instantly once they turn white and we start to get that crumbling. So pretty cool stuff there. It's not the easiest thing to figure out if you're new and just starting out with RBD constraints and trying to figure out how to actually make them work using wrangles and different things. But hopefully this helped you out. Uh, maybe I will cover a little bit more because there is some more interesting stuff that you can do with this. Um, maybe do that in a, a separate video kind of cover some more stuff that's in this file but if you are interested like i said this file will be available on patreon you can grab it there and take a look through the different examples that i have set up i also in the file go over how to create the constraints yourself so maybe we'll tackle that in in another video as well um, just kind of go over some different things so anyways i do have a bunch of other videos on my channel if you want to learn more about houdini you can check out the different videos there. I also cover some stuff on render engine. So Redshift is primarily what I've used, but I'm going to be probably taking a look at some other things in the future here. So if you're interested in that, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any of that. Hopefully this helped you out and you learned something. Uh, constraints can be a little bit uh, confusing when you're first starting out. So uh, hopefully this made sense. Feel free to ask questions in the comments if you are confused, or you can hop in my Discord. I also have a Discord. It's free to join. You can hop in there and I'm active in there, answering all sorts of questions in there. So jump in there if you're interested. But like I said, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.